I always say, if your partner's asking for your attention, of course, if you're in the middle of something that cannot be done later, but if you're not, and it's just an average day, like when I'm in the kitchen with my hands full of cookie dough and you've called me out, I've used this example before, you know, because you've read something funny, I'll come out of the kitchen into the room with my hands full of cookie dough because I like that you stop to share with me because you thought I would enjoy it. And I think that couples don't do that enough. And when they don't, it usually causes um, arguments and feeling lonely in a relationship. Welcome to the Spiritually Hungry Podcast Episode 98, Summer Edition. Uh, we know all of our listeners have busy summers like us, but uh, we love doing this so much that we didn't want to take a summer break. So instead, during the months of I July... I want to be able to give our listeners some consciousness, some wisdom. Instead, during the months of July and August, we're going to do short 10-minute episodes, but they'll probably be a little... 10 minutes. They could be eight. No, they won't be under eight. They, they might be, be up to 20. <laughs> We hope you like them as much as hopefully we're going to enjoy recording them. So this first one, um, I thought was kind of fun. It's not a new concept at all. It's based on the book, The Five Love Languages that came out in 1992. In that book, Dr. Gary Chapman noticed patterns in couples that he was counseling. And he realized that couples were misunderstanding each other's needs. So he led that, that led him to these five love languages. Do you know what they are? No, I do not. Basically, it's ways that people express love in relationships. The first, not in any specific order, actually, but one is words of affirmation. That's one language. Can you explain that? I just want to understand I'm that. going to unpack it in a minute. Okay. I'm listening then. The second is quality time. Three, physical touch. Four, acts of service. And five, receiving gifts. That was way too fast for me. I'm going to break it down. Good. Okay. While most of us appreciate all expressions of love, we usually have ones that make us feel most loved. And that one is usually the way we tend to express love to other people. So for instance, if your love language is words of affirmation, that means the way you communicate love is you encourage, affirm, appreciate, empathize, listen actively. And then the actions that you would take would be send an unexpected note, a text, a card, encourage genuinely and often. Things to avoid would be non-constructive criticism, not recognizing or appreciating effort. Okay. So, so what's the first one? Words of affirmation. Meaning Basically, people... you listen actively, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what's that? But, but it means that this is the way that you, you, want, to, you want, want to receive? Be communicated to. Yes. This is how, if, if that's your love language. If your love language is words of affirmation, that makes you feel like great. If I, I listen actively and I empathize with you. Well, I'm just trying to think what mine is. I'm not, well, you don't is. know yet. I'm exactly. not part of what we're going to do today. So now I want to make, I want to make, we start to have some fun. <laughs> That was the game that was going to come oh, after this section. Oh, there's a game. I'm excited now. So the first one is affirmation. Words of affirmation. Okay. Um, another way is physical touch. So nonverbal, oh, wow. use body language, touch to use body language and touch to emphasize love. Right? Hugs, kisses, hand holding, show physical attraction um, and affection regularly. That kind of thing. Okay. Right? Because we know that couples and I meet with a lot of people who don't even have sex anymore and they're like but you know we're fine I'm like no, you're, you're actually campy so um the third is receiving gifts so thoughtfulness make your spouse a priority speak purposefully sorry so you said receiving gifts and then you said well, these are the ways to communicate it by being thoughtful getting you know showing doing acts of like doing kind things the third language is receiving gifts. If I don't understand, this is so a good you would give thoughtful though. gifts and gestures. Small things matter in a big way. Express gratitude in receiving a gift. It's like you know, some couples are like that. Like, oh, you know, I know that he, I, it really speaks to me when he brings me flowers every week, right? Okay, it's it's so this kind of way that like, they know that they're loved. Okay. The opposite, right? If you if a partner wasn't doing that, they'd forget special occasions. For instance, they would give a gift without enthusiasm, right? Another way, uh, love lang another language of love is quality time. That would be important to that person, right? Un uninterrupted and focused conversations, one-on-one -on -one time is critical. That means you take time to create space for those moments, take walks, do small things with your partner, weekend getaways, etc. Versus being distracted on your phone or going long stints without one-on-one -on -one time together. And the last one is acts of service. So it's really being involved like, 
I'll help with that or I'll wash the dishes today or, you know, going the extra mile, like if your partner sleeps in and you go and make them breakfast or get them coffee when you're getting your own, that kind of thing, right? It's, it's sharing in that way, going out of your way to help alleviate their daily workload. The opposite of this would be, which I think it's important to mention, would be making the requests of others at a higher priority, lacking follow through on tasks big and small. Yes, Mike. I was raising my hand. Those of you who are watching, I'm so so. I want to be. I want to understand this. So, what's his name again, Doctor Gary Chapman? Gary Chapman. He he's saying that everybody has but, you, these because, five I, because I'm, as I'm looking at this list, I, I I would like to both give and receive all five. Yes, obviously I would too. I think most everybody would. But what would be the most important to you? Like, what is the way that you know you are loved? What would you say? What because would you say? for you, well, that's the, what the, the, what I wanted to do. What do you think my oh, language okay. love game. is, my love language is? And I was going to guess what your love language is. I mean, there has to be one, you're saying one that is strong. The one, because for instance, right? Yes, let's say receiving gifts, for instance. That is not your lang- oh, love language. Oh, that is the opposite of my love okay, language. Okay, so, um, <laughs> and so it's, you, I think you would know, you know, narrow it down. So first I'm you're going to, to try to guess that, that, my that, love okay, language. Okay, <laughs> let's see. And by the way, I think this is a good game for our listeners. If you are in a relationship, well, if you're not, then you can, it's good to know for yourself. By yourself. Or to sit with your partner. Let me think about this. I think it's, I, th- I can't say it's one. I mean, what comes to mind would no, be. No, I'm just very clear about one, what I like. One and four. <laughs> one and four. Well, one, four, and three. Or not necessarily that. Meaning um, affirmations, quality time, and gifts. That's not, I don't. No, you disagree vehemently. <laughs> Do I not know you after all these years? No, you're not wrong. Yeah, I mean, there's there's things that are important to me at different times, but there's only one that if you didn't do it, it would be a, a real problem. Quality time? <laughs> Am I in trouble? Words of affirmation. Yeah. Is the one. Like listening listening actively, encouraging genuinely, being very invested right. and involved. Like no, that if makes you, sense. And I think, yeah. And if I had to guess your love language. Is that part of the game? I would say <laughs> it's the same. I think that that is number Aff- one. Really? Listening actively, empathizing with what you're going through, encouraging you. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that that's my number one. Really? Gosh, well, I don't know about this, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I think quality time would be my number well, one. Let me just look at this. Yeah, I mean, you do ask for those things a lot. I think that's how you, you do. And then that probably would seem like the obvious, I guess. But I think I chose words of affirmation for you because I just think that I do them so well that you don't know you. <laughs> you do them. No, like really, if you think about the difficult times we've been through, and if I wasn't empathetic and I didn't show you appreciation, I didn't live, listen actively to you. I guess. Like I think that I think, you're almost yeah. taking that for granted. Like it's obvious. Maybe you want more. Of because you're so time. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you want more of. So I don't know. I mean, it's not so black and white. Well, that's the thing. I'm trying to figure this out. So, so I haven't read the book, but you have obviously. Um, he's he he's saying that these are the thing is this like the the what he found in the couples that he met with is that they didn't know how they gave love to their partner the way they wanted to receive it way, and it's right. a different language and they weren't thinking about the right. language of the partner so really it's a way to be empathetic and put yourself in your partner's shoes so you know how to give to them that's that's really how I see it yeah, and I just think again. I think for both of us, but you know, again, I think you want more quality time, which is why you're saying that's your language of love. But I really think that for both of us, what we brought to each other. I mean, I don't put words in your mouth. You totally disagree with me, but I think when we fell in love, we both. It was the first time we were seen and we were heard and we felt understood. And so I think that that is just a constant in our relationship. The words of affirmation, and for me, that's very nurturing. I just I know that that is that is my love language. Oh, that's for sure. But I definitely that, like that I agree. all the but, other things. Yeah, but for me... I like but, all the other things. I me, love when you do acts of service. Yes. Love quality time. I yes. love receiving gifts yes. from you. Love physical touch. So, but I would say that's the, the main one. Um, but you're saying quality time. I don't know. You really think that's your... I mean, the only one that I would say is a definite no is gifts. I don't like... I know that. ...to receive gifts. But yeah, I, I put in an order of affirmation. But this is not the way you play the game. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be only one. Is that what you're saying? I mean, according to Gary, I think uh, it is. But okay, Dr. what Chapman. are your two languages of love? I would just put it in order of importance, but I don't, I don't think... Actually, acts of service is also not so important to me. 
I think those two are really not That's, important. I just do that naturally also for you. <laughs> Monica, where did you put my... <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll accept that as a, as a possible answer. But I would say, therefore, I'm left with three. Affirmation, quality time, and physical. And I think in that order. order. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So I guess... So, yeah. Well, I do want to give you an example of a misaligned love language. Okay. Um, because, by the way, I think just... I mean, I, even in our conversation, even though I think we're very much in, 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 in tune with each other, I think even just having this conversation, I think, opens up some more uh, ways of connection. And I'm certainly, I think, for many of our listeners, it's a, it's a good conversation to have with your partner. But I'm trying to think just out of the box, are there other love languages? Because again, just to be clear, he's saying these are the main... That five, he saw in his saw. counseling. Yeah, I mean, I think they, they cover the five, you know, I mean... What are the the hierarchy of human needs? There's a few more. So maybe if we looked at that list, we like go. Oh, but I I think that you know, physical touch, appreciation, time together, acts of service. I think falls under the sharing part and spirituality. I think that you do that when you put your ego aside. So I I do. I think it covers all of them. Yeah, no, I agree. Um. So this is a couple of this is a, a an example of a couple who has a misaligned love language. The um, let's call her Cindy. Is this, is this a real couple? Yes. <laughs> Some of you have been counseling. So for her, it's acts of service, you know, that cup of coffee or doing the dishes or helping out around the house for, I better write these names down or forget it. So Cindy and let's say Carl. <laughs> you don't want to sort of by accident say the, the real name. And Carl's love language is physical touch. And they acknowledge that neither, uh, neither of them are very successful at focusing on the other's love language. They're aware of it, or you made them aware of it? Well, they're aware of it now. Um, <laughs> Cindy keeps doing acts of service, and Carl keeps trying to hug her, usually while she's in the middle of something. She says, I'm trying to do something, and he interrupts that as, you don't love me, and he interprets that as, you don't love me. And she retorts, of course I love you, why else would I do all this stuff for you? So that's an example of, right? They love each other, but they're just giving each other what the other one really wants. Right. So I do think it's an important thing. And I, and then it brings me to that concept that I read about in Rethink Love about bids of affection. There's so many couples that reject bids of affection from a partner because they don't really even recognize it as such. And I always say, if your partner is asking for your attention, of course, if you're in the middle of something that cannot be done later, but if you're not, and it's just an average day, like when I'm in the kitchen with my hands full of cookie dough and you've called me out, I've used this example before, you know, because you've read something funny, I'll come out of the kitchen into the room with my hands full of cookie dough because I like that you stopped to share with me because you thought I would enjoy it. And I think that couples don't do that enough. And when they don't, it usually causes um, arguments and feeling lonely in a relationship. Also, research shows that when you habitually turn away from your partner, it harms the relationship over time because then you just stop asking. So and I think it's such an important point. Again, I, I think that maybe a real reason that happens is that people aren't even aware that that's what's happening, right? Because you could say, you just go, you know, I'm in the middle of whatever, doing, entering emails, and you called me, you wanted to show me something. You know, Do you right. not respect my time? Exactly. Why they, yeah. You know. As opposed to understanding, no, what's actually, it's interesting, right? It's reminding me of the, my, one of our more favorite songs. Um, um, I see, uh, I think the words are, correct me if I'm wrong, I see men shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you, mm -hmm. right? And the point I is that we... Oh, you you never sang, you never sang on this podcast. Really? Yes, I did. It's not true. That I, I <laughs> Once I made know. you. Yeah, I, I put you in that Um corner. So no, maybe, maybe maybe in the next, next episode, <laughs> that's what we'll do, just sing to each other songs. No. Um, but I think the point is that it's a good time for couples to, or people in a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, to ask the question, you know, how in the past week, day, has my partner made a, um, a bid for attention? Um, and I rejected it, not being aware really of what was being said. I think it's a very important point. And I think, by the way, one, I think one of your great abilities is being able to, to ascertain not from, from the obvious, sort of from the scene, what's really going uh, uh, on uh, below it. And I think that's one of the reasons people miss them is because they're then they're thinking, well, he's just asking me to watch a video. I might or might not want to, as opposed to saying, no, he's actually talking to me and saying, you know, I want to love you in in this way. I think it's a very important point. There's a quote by Pierre Reverdy, and he said, "There is no love; there are only proofs of love." I like that. Again, can I disagree? Really? 
of course there's love, right? There's no seen love. There's only seen proofs, proofs. of love. Proofs, well... Because, because love exists, right? As we sit here now, I, I believe... I have a tremendous amount of love for you, but if I and hopefully you have a great love yes, for me. Yes, but I know that because you show me that repeatedly. Exactly. So, so, so it's not. Maybe so, that's well, what he meant. Maybe that's what he meant. That is what he meant. He just said it very poetically, and you're taking it very matter of factly. Uh huh. I apologize. Uh, then. Okay. <laughs> but again, because <laughs> the statement was there is no love, right? There is no seen love. Although, of course, there is tremendous love, but there are seen proofs of love. Do we agree? Yes. <laughs> so if anybody wants to go deeper into the love languages, you can buy his book or actually you can go to... More importantly, buy Rethink Love by Monica Bird. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we yes. hope you enjoyed this uh, shorter version of Spiritually Hungry. Still continue to send your questions, comments, stories, corrections to anything we said, um, or requests for songs to Monica and com. Make sure to share this podcast with everybody you know. And on Apple Podcasts, write five-star reviews. And again, get the word of this podcast out to more and more people. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it. Oh, and there is homework. Figure out your love language and make sure your partner or your future partner knows it. Now, go enjoy the sun. Stay spiritually hungry. <laughs> <laughs>